listen, repeat. Broadcasting from the Camp Grilling Studios, this is Sporting Journal Radio. <laughs> Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. That's a new personal best bike here. Now here's your host, Brett Amundsen. That's right. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in on this station right here on the Sporting Journal Radio Network by downloading the podcast. Maybe you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Rumble, wherever. Thank you very much. Dan Amundsen is right over there. Dan, how you doing? Hey, doing well. We got a lot to get to. We're talking about spring stuff and some maybe a little bit of late ice fishing, too. We got some late ice tip up tips coming up for Big Pike later in the show. We're also going to talk about spring fishing where it's uh, where water starting to open up on the rivers. Maybe you want to target something different, uh, something that you don't have to wait for the season to open up. We got some, we've got some ideas for you to get out there and uh, and feel that that tug on the end of your line. Might not be the fish you're thinking of, though. We've got that uh, that coming up a little bit later in the show. We'll also talk about the Rainy River. Our big party is coming up here in uh, just a couple of weeks. We'll give you more details about that, where and when, and all that good stuff. Oh, there, I guess there it is right there. I was going to just tease it. but Well, I want to show that as much as we can. <laughs> April 5 and 6 at the Rainy River. Uh, we're at Riverbend. We got uh, some prizes through the Fish Donkey app. Uh, find out more information about the Sporting Journal Radio, Rainy River 500. Go to uh, sportingjournalradio.com. Uh, Uh, We'll also talk about some of the sports shows and some of the interesting products. I saw some things that I'd never seen before at the Northwest Sports Show. Also did a walkthrough at the Deer Classic, Deer and Turkey Classic at uh, Canterbury Park. We've got footage and those videos coming up of what you missed out if you didn't go or if you were there. You might be in one of the videos. So that's coming up here in uh, just a little bit. Uh, Dan, who is this week's show brought to us by? Yep, this week's show is brought to us by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. Camp Grayling, Catch the Grand Slam, Trophy Pike, Lake Trout Grayling, and Walleye. Fish Camp Grayling in Saskatchewan this summer. Ottertail Lakes Country, find your inner otter at ottertaillakescountry.com. Haybell Heights Campground and Resort on Devil's Lake. Chase perch and walleyes out of a heated snowbird or plan a trip for the summer on Devil's Lake. Learn more at haybellheights.com. Lake of the Woods Tourism. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. Plan a trip to ice fish or get ready for the rainy river in April. At Learn more at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. <laughs> Don't laugh. No, now we're late again. Hang on. Oh, back her up. Now, Prairie, Prairie, Sportsman. Prairie Sportsman. The new season is underway. <laughs> Watch episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. The Midwest That's Wild right. Sheep Foundation is giving away a doll sheep hunt at their banquet March 25th and 26th at the Minneapolis Marriott Southwest. Learn more at the MidwestWildSheep.com. And Mid-Migration Outfitters, get ready to hunt spring snows this March. Get more info at MidMigrationOutfitters.com. Man, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I just set a snow goose spread in the mud. And I know I didn't because you and Tony yeah, did. Tell me about it. Oh, it can be a lot of work. I am I am wrecked. And I don't know if it's from, I think it's from doing the, the, the sports show grind. You know, the Northwest Sports Show this year it was Thursday through Sunday which isn't too bad. And Thursday was actually, I mean, the crowds were a little lighter this year, uh, expectedly, uh, but it was a good crowd. There was people that came right up to us when we opened at one o'clock on Thursday that wanted to talk fishing. So it was the right kind of crowd that was there, but it used to be a lot longer of a show and man, you'd be dragging at the end of it. And, uh, I don't know, I am tired today. So I think I'm feeling it from, uh, from those sports shows, but we'll show you what those sports shows look like here in just a little bit. Um, uh, that spring snow goose spread is up for mid migration outfitters and uh, Dan, Tony, and I'll be out there a little bit too. But Dan and Tony will be carrying the heavy load, and you're ready for uh, ready for clients to chase those white devils around, aren't you? Yeah, we just need some more birds to show up. They're on their way. We've yeah. been seeing them more and more. But uh, yeah, we spent spent the day this week and got the whole thing set, so we're ready to roll. There's been reports of geese into North Dakota. Uh, that's just rumors I've heard. I haven't seen any proof of it. But with weather as nice as it is, they're gonna those adults, the lead edge birds, are gonna push as hard as they can they're anxious to get up there they're hard to hunt anyway i like the birds in the middle and and at the end of the migration personally myself uh but that ground i mean when the snow they follow that snow line so when that snow melts they will push they still like open water so they might get held <clears throat> they might get held up or they'll get held up at that snow line or they'll bounce back and forth i'm sure we'll see uh, we got snow coming yet i'm sure although uh, some really warm temperatures in the forecast for the next couple of weeks so it could get interesting but usually there's some snowstorms in march that push those adults back and forth and then they bounce around uh, but that ground despite 
despite all the mud and all the snow melting, Dan, that ground was pretty frozen when he set that spread. Yeah, you know, it froze fast or thawed fast. And so we had to, you know, snow goose spreads are big, but we had to drill in every single stake for the decoy. <laughs> so yeah, there's Tony to literally with a drill making a hole and he'd place a stake and I'd follow it around Oof, and replace the decoy on top. And we did that for every single full body and, and full body shell that we have. Um, so yeah, it was an all day process and, and that's why you hire a guide. Cause you don't want to be doing that every morning. Uh, I'm not just saying that just because we're going to be doing some guiding. It's, right. it's, it's tough stuff. Yeah. If you're going to hire a guide for any type of waterfall hunting, that's first on the list just because the investment that goes into all the decoys and the gear. Yeah. And Tony just got a new side by side this year for, for everything. And, uh, but setting all those decoys in the mud, it's no fun. I've definitely done it, but, uh, find out more at midmigrationoutfitters.com. Uh, we want to congratulate, uh, Minnesotan Brent Sass. He won the Iditarod and, uh, he beat, in a close race, the second place, uh, what, uh, what was his name? Dallas, Dallas CV, I think. And he's a five time Iditarod winner. So this guy from Minnesota, from Excelsior, uh, won the Iditarod recently. Uh, congratulations to Brent Sass, especially for beating out somebody that had won it five times. Uh, that's great. You know, we've done some dog sledding here and I think there was a race on the Gunflint here, uh, recently as well. And, uh, the Beatty twins who we've known, Known for a few years now, they uh, had some success up there as well, too. Uh, Carly took a uh, first place trophy and Chloe took a second place. So congratulations to Carly and Chloe Beatty, the uh, Beatty twins that like to do some dog sledding. All right. Um, our 500 show is coming up. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We're making plans for it right now. The uh, Rainy River Party is uh, coming up. We're going to go to Riverbend Resort April 4th and uh, fish April 5th and 6th. It's 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on both uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, April, 4, April 5th and April 6th. And then uh, we're going to have parties uh, in the bar, some uh, happy hour and some prizes. And we're going to record this podcast, our 500 show. You can be there and be a part of it. Download the Fish Donkey app to sign up for the tournament. It's a 20 bucks per person. It's unlimited. You don't have to stay at Riverbend. Uh, anybody that's fishing the Rainy River on the 5th and the 6th and the U.S. side, you can enter the tournament. We got prizes for the three biggest walleyes and three biggest sturgeon as well. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors, of course, Riverbend Resort, Smith's Consumer Products. We'll be giving away some Smith's uh, fillet knives, some electric fillet knives. Also, Live Target will be giving away a bunch of crankbaits and some other uh, lures from, from Live Target. And Yamaha's Right Waters. And when I told Yamaha about the Rainy River and the cleanup, uh, the Clean Water Act back in the 1970s and what that, what that cleanup did to the sturgeon population on the Rainy River, they said, yes, we want to be a part of this because Yamaha's Right Waters knows about conservation and sustainability they Yamaha Rightwaters. They reinforce Yamaha's long-standing dedication to preserving the natural resources we have today, so that our customers can continue to enjoy them tomorrow. You can find out more at yamahaboats.com or join us, uh, or just go to the link at uh, sportingjournalradio.com on the SJR Rainy River 500 page. All right, Brandy Prairie Sportsman is back this Sunday night on Pioneer PBS. Uh, we're up in Ely. Uh, we we uh, visited uh, some people making snow shoes and learned a little bit more about the Ely community. You can watch that this Sunday night or watch for it on the new Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. All right, coming up, we'll walk through the Northwest Sports Show and the Deer Classic for you right here on this show. Uh, but first, we have to talk to someone who got very, very lucky. 852 million acres of public land. 147 million private properties. All in the palm of your hand. The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx, know where you stand with Onyx. So we were up at Lake of the Woods a couple of weeks ago fishing with Al's Goldfish Lures and uh, we we're at Riverbend Resort. We were up there for an Aglow conference. St. Croix Rods were up there and we absolutely hammered a bunch of fish on these Al's Goldfish little 49ers. Crushed them. So we put this, uh, this video out and we were put the podcast out I think on Friday and I get a message from this guy, Andrew, and he goes, hey, where do you get those little 49ers? We're on our way to Lake of the Woods right now. And I said, so I emailed Al's Goldfish Lure Company, 
They emailed back and said, Cabela's and Rogers. So the group of guys going up to Lake of the Woods, I, I don't know where they were traveling. Maybe we'll find out here in a second. But they detoured through Rogers, stopped in Cabela's, wiped them out of these uh, Al's Goldfish lures, and proceeded to catch a bunch of fish on them up at uh, Lake of the Woods. Well, I, I was getting updates from Andrew throughout the, their trip up there, and he sent me a video. Do we have the video of this fish getting caught right here? Just take your time. That's a huge fish. Hey, dead stick, Brady, dead stick over here. Come on, Brady. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Holy! Shut the hook! Shut the hook! Dang! Holy! That is a big fish. Oh yeah! Oh, it's pulling my line out. Well, that's fine. You got it. Is it? That's good. Oh, Brady, let me read it. Oh no, it's stuck. It's stuck. Oh, we're stuck. That's probably the line. Whoa! Are we stuck? Yeah. Just. Yep, it's fine. Let go. Oh, let my line out. Just let my line out. Oh, I got yeah, his line. Yeah. He went all the way over there. Real up. The other pole's going down the hole. Oh, oh, got two. I got two. <laughs> I <laughs> love this. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. Oh, so bite. great. Dad, can you help? Bite me? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the teeth are pretty sharp oh. in those fish. Oh, oh, oh. I love the reaction is the best part. And I oh. said, you know, we, we, we've shown that video on here before. And I said, if that guy ever has a TV show, I'm going to watch it every time just to see that reaction when he catches a big fish. And that guy joins us right now. Corey Hambeck is on the show. Corey, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's good to watch that video again. Explain the feeling you had when you held that fish. Oh, it, uh, I, I mean, it was shocking. Um, because really, as that fish is gone, it was a three to four minute struggle. Um, and Camden, Andrew's oldest son, was the one pulling him out of the hole. And so he starts pulling it up. He's like, ah, oh, that's a big pike. And then he pulls it up more and he just kind of went ghost white. And so <laughs> that's when I'm like, man, it, I think it's pretty big. And then my father-in-law, John Vogel, sang next to me. He's an avid fisherman. He's like, Corey, you have no idea what you just caught. So uh, <laughs> that got me going. That's great. Well, congratulations. Um, how many fish did you catch on that trip? As a, as a group, we, I think we caught 28. <laughs> I mean, you specifically. Uh, one. I, I was kind of <laughs> like one and done. I, you know, Brad, it was, uh, I, I think you mentioned it was my first time ever ice fishing so i i thought you know when you average your your average walleye is over 30 inches maybe i'll retire <laughs> just give it up yeah <laughs> it's gonna be tough to beat that man first time ever ice fishing catches one fish it was 30 and a half inches yeah, yeah. 30 and a half inches and uh the guide i think said that was the biggest walleye he'd seen all winter yeah yep yeah, that's what he said so yeah it was uh, it was it was nice that's great. So, and you were fishing with uh, just a, a plain hook and a minnow, right? With a, what, did you have a bobber? Yeah, no bobber. No bobber. Yeah, just a uh, yeah red hook, gold jig, and, and minnow. And did he come? He just came up and and hammered it, or how did he? How did it go? Well, how it went is uh, we finally, you know, it was, we were about eighteen miles north um, and took the bombardiers out and. Finally got settled in about 10 in the morning and uh, start fishing. And, and so the cell signal kind of comes and goes. So I pick up my phone, put it on speakerphone and call my wife and just, hey, checking in. We're, we're out here. It's all good. Um, and then all of a sudden, my father-in-law, Johnny V, is like, hey, Corey, fish on, fish on. So I, I throw the phone down. Um, it was still on. So she heard the whole thing from her <laughs> end. <laughs> and then... And then, you know, pulled it up from there. That's awesome. Um, you were out of, out of sporties, it looked like there. And uh, w yeah. that so you got pretty lucky fishing. That's not the only luck you had recently, right? You're a golfer, too? Yeah, yeah. I love golfing. And so month of January, uh, I was in Arizona and uh, got my first hole in one uh, out there. So it's it's been a good start to the year, you know. January hole in one, February this massive walleye, and and people ask me, hey, what are you going to do next? I said, I'm playing the lottery here in March. Right. I was going to so say, I hope I you bought a Powerball ticket. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> wow. Well, well, that's great. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful fish. A heck of a way to start ice fishing. Are you going to go ice fishing some more, do some more fishing, try to top it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to grow next year. All the guys in the neighborhood are, are uh, like, we got to get up to Sportsman's Lodge and Lake of the Woods and uh, definitely do that. So I more of a bass fisherman growing up haven't fished a lot lately and and the trip was really around my father-in-law hmm. uh, lives down in metamora illinois long time avid fisherman lives on a lake and he had never been up here and so was talking with andrew hey he's coming up let's go to prior lake or crystal lake down here in lakeville he said no if he's coming up let's do it right and uh, definitely was worth it and great stories from it what did he think of the whole the whole trip then Oh, he loved it. He loved it. He's a former football coach, so he's a storyteller. I mean, uh, uh, it was a great time. My son is a sophomore at the University of North Dakota, and so he was able to come over. That day was a blizzard, so he didn't get there till 1 o'clock, so he missed the big catch, but uh, he was there the rest of the time. So uh, that was the fun part of it with Andrew and his boys and father-in-law and my son. It it was fantastic. I bet a new tradition is getting started. Yes, for sure. That's for how it sure. happens. That's how it happens. And then when you catch a 30 and a half inch walleye, that's how you become a walleye fisherman and less of a bass fisherman, by the way. That, that's right. how, oh yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> All right, uh, Corey, well, uh, beautiful fish. Congratulations and thanks for the time today on the show. Yeah, you bet. Appreciate it. Keeping sheep on the mountain. That's the goal of the Wild Sheep Foundation, and you can help by attending the Midwest chapter of the Wild Sheep Foundation's annual banquet, March 25th and 26th at the Minneapolis Marriott Southwest in Minnetonka. This year, you could win your very own doll sheep hunt in the Yukon. Plus, enjoy keynote speakers like conservationist Shane Mahoney, president and CEO of the Wild Sheep Foundation, Gray Thornton, and the British Columbia Backcountry Hunters and Anglers chapter liaison, Bill Hanlon. Plus, there'll be live and silent auctions and seminars put on by the hunting fool. For more information, go to MidwestWildSheep.com. <laughs> you ready to go, Trevor? Absolutely. Let's go have some fun. Very. Ready. Let's do it. What do you want to check out first? Do the boats. Boats. Well, here come the boats. It's way over on the other side. This is a double berry. <laughs> A little bit of, just a little bit of drool I'm seeing right there, Brian? Little bits, yes. What are you gonna put on that boat for electronics? Uh, Garmin. I wanna talk to you about this new Garmin unit I just bought, but before we do that, I've never talked to anybody that's been stuck in an elevator before. <laughs> so I gotta hear the story. So we're at the Bassmaster Classic, and you know, we're in the club level, and Jason Christie wins, we get excited. So Bassmaster grabs the Yamaha guys and the Garmin guys and the Luz guy, and we're gonna go downstairs to get pictures with Jason, and we well, get in the elevator, drops down just a little bit, and just stops, <laughs> and we're stuck, and it's hot. And we've all been drinking a lot of water, yeah. you know, and in times passing and passing, and pretty soon we find out, you know, we're stuck and waited for the fire department to come. I think it was like we're in there for like 40 some minutes, and Jeez. finally they were able to get it open. Then they had to brace it before anybody could get out. And, you know, the fire department did an awesome job getting us out. But yeah, it, I definitely took the stairs to my room that night. <laughs> I'm glad you survived. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this new unit I just bought. Yeah, so we got the Echo Map 93 here, you know, nine inch touchscreen. We've got um, some quick release buttons on there. It's got the quick release brackets. So you can pull that head unit right off of there and go from your boat into your ice bundle. Um, you've got all the maps for the whole United States. Great Lakes border water is built right into this unit. So whether you're on Devil's Lake in North Dakota or we go over to Sturgeon Bay, those maps are built in there. So that's an awesome feature. Um, it's also, of course, live scope capable. We just came out with the new Live Scope Plus. It is able to run that right here on the Echo Map 93. So you're going to have nine inch, you know, touchscreen display of the new Live Scope, which looks beautiful. Um, and of course, we're finding those crappies when you're ice fishing and those walleyes in the summertime. It works incredibly well for that. Um, plus all your other sonar features. So Echo Map 93 is really the most popular unit that I sell. It's a good screen size. It's an affordable unit for what you're getting and you know, really does a good job out there.
Raptor Project. Okay, and where do we find you online? Uh, RaptorProject.com. All right, what's your name? Name's TC. TC, where are we at right now? Right now we're at the Reed's booth. We've got the new Mr. Crappie Slabomatic, made by Smiths. A really nice, lightweight electric fillet knife on the market. A couple things that make it stand out here is it is going to be uh, one of the coolest vented electric fillet knives out there. So when you catch a big load of fish and you got a lot to clean up, this is gonna be the knife for you. Also, one more thing, you got two blades here. I, that is the smallest, nicest little blade I've seen for an electric fillet knife. So when you're handling them panfish and crappies, this is the knife for you. Can't beat puppies at a show. What? <laughs> Don't even. I've had you on this camera already, Savannah. Hey Come guys. On. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? How's the show been for you? It's been good, it's been busy. Today's been really busy for us. All right, I'm here to pick up all my rods. What rods are you getting? I'm gonna go to this All way. my rods, I'm here to pick them this all. This is the girl you wanna to talk to. <laughs> no, I'm not. She's I'm leaving. <laughs> my name's John, I'm with Shield Trailers. What is a Shield Trailer? So Shield is the first commercially available enclosed boat trailer. How does it work? So basically this is a transportation solution, a storage solution, a security solution all in one. So. You're gonna have your boat inside there. You're not gonna have any rock chips from uh, going down dirt roads with it. All of your gear, your boat, everything's all gonna be in one spot for you. So when you pull up to your fishing spot, you're gonna back the boat up, or the trailer up. We're gonna get the bumper in just a little bit of water there. And then from the inside, you're gonna jump into the boat and we've got this handy remote with you. So you hit the launch button there and it'll roll the boat out into the water before, and then you can launch from there. So at this point, you motor down and float it out. And then when you're coming back in at the end of the day, you're just gonna nose the boat in there, reach down and grab the winch strap, use your remote again, and winch yourself right back up in there. So is this, so is this trailer gonna be down into the water then a little bit, or does the boat come out and lower itself down a little more? We're gonna get just the bumper of the trailer to be in the water about six, 12 inches, yeah. Where do we find you online? Uh, Shieldtrailers.com. Nice, I'm just gonna take this. So you guys are cool if I just drive out with this right now? And the boat? Who's gonna tell me about these reels, Dan? Chad Smith. Gonna go with the New Zillion. If I can keep that in my hand all the time, I probably would. Okay. But I think the best bang for your bucks can be the new Tatula SV-103. Michael, you want to come back and take a look? Do it. Come on around. Let's get Michael on some of these big fish back here. Where are you from? Here? How's the show going? Awesome. Let's go in and take a look. Hey, there's Melissa Bachman. The fundraising banquet this year is coming up in two weeks, right? Yep. March 25th and 26th at the Marriott in Minneton. Go check it out. Go to MidwestWildSheep.com. Devin here at the Deer Classic uh, set up uh, River Brothers Outfitters. Yep. All right, and uh, tell me what you do. All right, we're based in Minnesota. We are an apparel brand. Uh, we started in 2018, fall of 2018. Our, our mission is literally to get people out, enjoy the outdoors, hunting, fishing, and forge what we call legendary traditions. And we do donate 2% back to local conservation. River Brothers Outfitters on Instagram, Facebook, riverbrothers.com is our website. Thanks, Jordan. You bet. And I'll be emceeing the Bluffland Whitetails Association annual banquet May 6th at the St. Charles Moose Lodge. Find out more at blufflandwhitetails.com. So you're wondering why you want to go 
the Deer Classic, this is why. My goodness. I could have spent about six more hours here, I think. How's it going? All right. Back to the Northwest Sports Show, ladies and gentlemen. And away we go. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, wrapping things up here from the Northwest Sports Show. Uh, Trevor, Barry, did you guys have a good time or what? Great time. It was nice to be back in show season. Yeah, it sure was. It was great to be, you know, out here talking fish and see some people. And, and like you said, you know, some old contacts and new contacts. It was wonderful. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of people from Minnesota here, and uh, just seeing some old guests is kind of fun, too. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Hey. All right, so where do we find Taz and Lake online? TazandLake.com. And uh, FishCampGrayling.com. And Barry, what do you think? TrailsAndOutfitters.com. Very nice. Ooh. See you next year. Ice fishing season is here. This winter, plan a trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Not only will you have the chance to catch their legendary perch, but this year, Hay Bale Heights has been catching big walleye after big walleye. And they're doing it from a mobile, comfortable snow bear. No matter how cold it is outside, you're warm and toasty on the inside. Learn more and book a trip today at haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. Well, the countdown is on. The SJR 500, our 500th show, is coming up at uh, the Rainy River, Lake of the Woods, here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, the show is April 9th, but we're going to be recording and celebrating at Riverbend Resort April uh, 4th through the 7th. And we're going to have a two-day fishing tournament on the Rainy River April 5th and 6th. And we've had a few people express some concerns about ice conditions, but I'll tell you what, the snow is pretty much gone around my house right now. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Rainy River and Lake of the Woods and some late ice fishing at Lake of the Woods as well with Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, you're down in Missouri right now. Yeah, actually down in Branson, Missouri. Uh, I'm at Chateau on the Lake. You can maybe see behind me here the uh, kind of what this property looks like. It's uh, Jeez, it looks like a painting. It, it is a painting, <laughs> but it's uh, that's the building I'm in right now. Cool. And uh, we're right on a beautiful lake, uh, Table Rock Lake, and uh, it's just a, a beautiful environment down here. But, you know, the Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Writers, and I know that you know, you and Danny, of course, are, are active members in the organization, but it's uh, just a, it's a great organization that pulls together destinations, you know, uh, outdoor companies, as well as, uh, you know, media people, people that create content. And it's just a real good mix, uh, uh, gives everybody a, a platform to uh, do good work. And, uh, you know, Lake of the Woods Tourism has been part of this for many, many years. So it's, uh, it's good that we're down here uh, doing some good work and collaborating and setting things up for the future. I've spent some time in Missouri. Oh, I lived in Missouri for a couple of years as a kid and got to bounce around a little bit, but I'd never been to Branson. So I'm looking forward to being out there this fall. Uh, some good fishing, obviously, down there, Joe. No ice. And that's kind of what I know some people like to late ice fish at Lake of the Woods. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to some open water on the Rainy River. I know we were a little bit nervous about it, but boy, we've got uh, highs in the, the 30s and maybe low 40s from now till the end of the month. Uh, up there at the Rainy River, and of course down here where I'm at, we I think we touched 60 the other day, and there may be another couple of days of 60s in there. So I think it's going to start happening fast. What's well, that? And when you know when that river when that starts busting up, when it starts melting, it rolls fast. And Mother Nature kicks it into gear, and that ice can go quick. So you know, oftentimes what happens in the spring is it doesn't appear that things are moving real quick, and all of a sudden, oh, did you see how much progress the Rainy River made yesterday? And you know, it, we we track the open water from the east moving west because that's where the open water goes and really the first access that with a with a bigger boat ramps that open up is uh, nelson park in birchdale which is about 30 miles to the east of Bidette. so we're we're excited we're kind of watching the open water uh, mark right now you know uh, um, it's it's common and i think that uh, you know things are looking pretty good based on the weather forecast you know at that same time i should mention that you know, people are still ice fishing and our ice fishing with our fish houses remaining on the ice will last through March 31st. And, you know, fishing has still been, uh, you know, real good. You know, people are still fishing walleyes, but I'll tell you what the talk ends up being this time of year. 
uh, is really for pike. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anglers are real excited. If you like catching big pike, I mean, right now at Lake of the Woods is a time where things start improving drastically and getting you a trophy class pike. You know, uh, Brett, basically tip up fishing with quick strike rigs using either really big live suckers. I mean, I'm talking live suckers that are 10, 12 inches long um, or using dead bait like herring and smelt. And of course, just know that you have to get your bait from an authorized bait dealer, but you know, hooking those up with that quick strike rig where you're putting that treble hook just behind the head of the bait and just uh, in front of the tail. You know, those live suckers, they've been working well, but that dead bait has been working well too. And, you know, oftentimes uh, there, there's a few different techniques for placing your bait in the water column. So sometimes some anglers will lay that dead bait, especially right on the bottom of the lake, right in the mud or sand. Those pike are notorious for being scavengers. And also they're, they're real good at sniffing out hibernating frogs in the mud, things like that. So picking up bait off the, the bottom of the lake is very instinctive for them. That's one technique. And another technique is putting that offering about uh, you know foot or two off the bottom. That's more of a traditional set. And then there's some people will actually put their bait uh, one to two feet just below the ice. The thought there again is that with these pike being scavengers, you know, a lot of a lot of little fish are released, and maybe if they don't make it, that they're floating up against the bottom of the ice, and uh, those pike will be cruising right below that ice. So a lot of ways to get her done, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of big pike being caught, and as the season progresses, as that snow melts, as that water starts getting into the lake and reoxygenating the lake, as that sun uh, gets stronger, the days get longer. Mother Nature kicks in and those huge pike start st setting up in front of their uh, spawning areas, areas we call pre-spawn. And I'll tell you what, it can be game on. And a lot of people are targeting probably the, uh, the south end of the lake and some of that shallower water. You know, normally that's where they're, they're headed, yeah. So adjacent to bays, uh, in some bays, in some cases, but adjacent to bays at shallower water. You know, we're fishing uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 feet of water. Um, one thing we always encourage mm -hmm. is that wherever you're fishing, instead of putting your tip ups all at the same depth in a straight line, spread them out depth wise. So you can kind of figure out where those pike are traveling. If you find out that those fish are going in, you know, 14 feet of water and you're getting a lot of flags mm -hmm. in 14 feet, put more tip ups in 14 feet. But then you're just kind of working together to dial in those pike each and every day. Hey, I love catching big pike, and that sounds like a good time. But, Joe, I cannot wait for the Rainy River to be up there fishing out of a boat. I got brand new electronics. Now, granted, I probably won't have my boat up there, but Dan got brand new electronics. Dan got the same thing I did, only just the smaller screen. And uh, we are jacked to use these things. And uh, yeah, here they come. I'm frozen. You're frozen. Cool. Oh, neat. All right. Well, it's a Garmin. He got the, I got the Echo Map 93 and Dan got the 73, right? Yeah, the budget version. The, bu <laughs> the budget version. Well, there's a smoke and deal yeah, on them. Yeah, Garmin, they're all good. They're yeah, all good. smoke and deal on them and uh, we couldn't pass it up. So we're, uh, we're anxious to get out on open water and, and uh, do a little bit of fishing, of course, for that party. Uh, two days. Let, let me tell you this, though. When that water opens up, Brett, I'll tell you, there's nothing like getting out there, having that current kind of have your jig at an angle and just kind of working upstream. You can anchor up. Otherwise, you work upstream a little bit and you have that heavier jig and you let that thing back and you thunk that bottom and you pull it forward. You let it thunk the bottom, you pull it forward, you let it back that third time and it stops premature. You set that hook on the, I mean, I'll tell you why, you never know what you're going to get. And some of the walleyes we get in the spring can be absolutely a fish of a lifetime. If you hit it right, I'll tell you what, you, you can have a 50 fish day easy. I mean, it is just incredible fishing. It's, it, it, you never know, every year is different, but there's a reason people come back in the spring on the Rainy River. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've, you know, you have to time it and you have to deal with conditions, but I'll tell you what, the opportunity to catch a, a fish of a lifetime is always there no matter when you're up there. I'm excited about it. And if you could, can I call somebody to um, have them maybe clear the ice out of the river and then have like maybe some 60 degree days there in early April? Would that be? Well, I I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, Mother Nature is normally pretty good to us. I, I don't have her on speed dial, but uh, <laughs> we do have uh, uh, Cooch County and, and Lake of the Woods County both, but they, they help us out. So when that middle of the river starts going and we have ice in front of that boat ramp blocking it, they actually go down and clear the boat ramps out of ice with their back hose. So they work really closely and they do a great job. And I'll tell you what that does, it's almost a safety measure. That way people aren't pushing their trailers and boats over the ice. 
Well, I'm looking forward to it, Joe. And if people want to get in on late ice fishing or uh, get up on, on the rainy river here this spring, or maybe even plan a summer trip, what should they do to get more info? You know what? C- current information day to day, Facebook and Instagram. Hey, otherwise, uh, all the other information, it's our, our website, and that is Lake of the Woods mn.com come ice fish the famous waters of minnesota's lake of the woods the walleye capital of the world experience full service resorts featuring heated fish houses ice transportation meal plans and sleeper house options from the northwest angle to the south shore rainy river and baudette the midwest number one ice fishing destination walleye sauger perch and northern pike minnesota's lake of the woods best fishing anywhere for more information, log on to LegoTheWoodsMN.com. Looking for winter adventure? Might as well pick a place with over 1,000 lakes. Ottertail County, Minnesota is in the middle of everywhere, offers a simpler pace, and has something for everyone. Find your inner otter at ottertillakescountry.com. Well, everybody's starting to think about spring, whether it's spring snow goose hunting or maybe getting out there and feeling that open water once again and uh, maybe dropping a line or casting from shore or just seeing no snow and no ice. Now, while most of our snow has disappeared here in my neck of the woods, there is still a little bit more to the north and some frozen bodies of water and some rivers. And to tell us a little bit more about conditions in Ottertail Lakes Country, Eric Osberg joins us right now. Eric, are you ready for spring or do you want want to hold on to winter a little bit longer i'm done with winter man (laughs) you can you can have it i'm 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 still going to enjoy uh the outdoors in in whatever conditions mother nature gives me whether it's winter spring summer or fall but uh yeah i'm ready to switch i'm ready to transition it around my place it sounds like spring you know the what it's like it's like fergus in the fall the canada geese are flying over they're making a, a racket they're uh they're noisy they're filling up all the fields and they're on frozen i guess we have a little bit of open water uh on the on the minnesota river but otherwise all the sloughs are still frozen they're sitting on ice and uh, it's just starting to feel like spring out there and you guys must have got more snow than we did up up in Ottertail county i i think it felt like we got a blizzard every thursday right like that's i mean that's what my brain tells me no there's at the time of this taping, there's a foot and a half of snow. You know what I mean? Like, 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 it, and it's, it's settled a bunch, right? Like it's come down a lot and we're in full melt, but there's still a foot and a half of snow. In there. I mean, you're less than two hours away from me and I'm ready to get the lawnmower out. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. We're, we're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing uh, you do have, in Ottertail County that I know people get excited about is, is, uh, you know, some moving water in the Ottertail river. How soon does that start opening up and, uh, getting the ice off of it? Well, there's parts of it that never close. So, so I mean, maybe for a day or two, but it's, it's, it's a lot of moving water. So, so where the Ottertail river comes out of rush Lake, uh, I'd be right off of highway 78 in between, uh, the city of Ottertail and Purim, uh, I was there yesterday and, and that's open, wide open. And, and the, the ice off of the main lake is starting to, it's not breaking up and floating down, but you can see it receding, you know, where that, where that current is. And um, so that's one of our, one of our favorite springtime hobbies is to go check for suckers, right? Like, like if, if we can't get on the ice, there's been many a time where the boy and I have, have set out to go ice fishing and we've said, no, we're not going ice fishing. So we go to the river and, and start looking for suckers to see if they're running. Because if you haven't, and it, it, I, I mean, suckers are a rough fish, and yeah. so they have a stigma and all that stuff, and, oh, it's a sucker. But I tell you what, there's nothing funner than sitting on a riverbank with the sun on your back and and catching suckers, or at least trying to catch suckers. It's uh, – it's, uh, it's pretty therapeutic. Yeah. Well, you- I think you're onto something there too, Eric, because with the more, with more and more people just enjoying fishing and while I like to eat 
fish, of course, but the perception of fishing is becoming more of a catch and release sport with uh, maybe a few here for, for a meal. People aren't looking to stock their freezer for the winter anymore, I don't think. Um, the, the perceptions are changing. You know, uh, eel pup burbot becoming a, a game fish. Uh, tulabies getting targeted, tulabies and whitefish getting targeted a little bit more. People love to have that tug on the end of their rod and then to try to break down a body of water and figure out how to target some of those rough fish. I think Garrett Sphere did it uh, a couple years ago up there where he went out and just tried to catch all the rough fish uh, probably in the Otter Tail River. I don't remember where he was, but he was out there trying to catch, uh, you know, suckers or moon eye or something. I don't remember. Sheep had Quil- something like that. Quillback. 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 Didn't he, didn't he quillback. I'm like, what's a quillback? I didn't, know that, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. So, no, you're exactly right. I mean, if variety is one of the spices of life, um, that's it's a fun opportunity. And you, you're going to maybe see other things or observe other things. When we were... Last uh, last spring, Willie and I went. You know, same routine. It was it was later in the transition to open water, but Willie and I went there, and there were sturgeon, lots and lots of big, huge sturgeon trying to get over this fish passage. Cool. And we sat and, and we watched them and watched like an hour at least. Um, and and there was one. It, it finally made it over. And it got to the other side, and then it it, it rested like it came to this because it had been working hard. It rested, so Willie was able to reach in the water and like touch it, like pet it. <laughs> it and it's a it's a forty five inch sturgeon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, to your to your point, there's all sorts of things with fins in the river or rivers, and 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 oh, by the way, there is a one hundred and fifty mile designated state water trail. If you're a canoer, if you're a kayaker, if you're a paddler, you can start up by Frazee. And you can uh, canoe the Otter Tail River. There's a lot of portages, uh, little portages. Yeah, there you go. There's Dan. Who, Dan is a man. How did he find that <laughs> so quick? That's exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that was the first sucker of the year last year. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's and that's the spot over by over by um, Rush Lake where the Otter Tail River runs out hmm. and and heads down to Otter Tail. But um, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of the 150 mile state designated water trail. You can go from Frazee and then all the way to uh, Fergus Falls and beyond. And there's there's little portages. You you'd have to paddle some big water. You'd have to paddle across Otter Tail Lake, right? Mm-hmm. You'd come in on the northeast side, and then you'd have to paddle across Otter Tail Lake. But if you're a a, a canoe adventure person. That, that'd be a bucket list idea is I want to do that whole hundred. I, I haven't done it. I, I want to do that whole 150 miles. Well, when you do it, target suckers. And yeah. if, if you were going to do that, what would you bring? How would you do it? If I was going to target suckers, and I, I learned this from Greg Clujiao. I don't know if you know Greg or not, but uh, he's, a, he's a Facebook uh, angler, Northland pro staff guy. It's, 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 a, it's a clip. It's an, I use an egg sinker. Sorry, this is kind of backwards on my screen. I use, I use an egg sinker and I have a, a, a quarter, a three eighths, a half, a three quarter and a one, those different ounces, depending on the current. And then I have a clip. And then if you go to Walmart, they sell these pre-rigged Eagle claw leaders or whatever. They got a hook on the end and then they got a loop on this end and they're like a buck for six, Hmm. right? So it's, it's an egg sinker. It's a clip, and then it's these short pre-rigged uh, uh, leaders, and and then you, and then it's a gob of worms. Then you just load it up with with night crawlers, and and and, and the idea is those those rigs, you, you know, you can get broke off. Sometimes your sinker breaks off, right? So you got to re-rig the whole thing, but it's not a it's not an expensive setup, and you can just throw it out there and gently pull it back through the current, or you can throw it out there and get a stick and stick the rod in the ground and sit back and have a soda and feel the sunshine <laughs> on your shoulders for a little while. It was like Snell's, right? Those prepackaged. Yeah. Those yeah. prepackaged. Yeah. Snell's. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Um, absolutely. So uh, that's cool. Again, you know, as an angler, I mean, you never get tired of catching walleyes. I never get tired of catching walleyes, but it's fun to go out and try different things, target different species, try to figure it out. And, uh, you know, I, I think 39 hours, was it 39 hours? Did it one year or something? Yeah. One of those guys where they, they got points for all the different species that they caught. So they were targeting moon eyes and 
all kinds of different fish. I think yeah. that's brilliant. And and it, you had mentioned walleyes, and I, I don't know if we have time, but I have one more thing. If if you're into walleyes, you've you've been to a walleye hatchery, right, Brett? I have. Yeah. Okay. So, so I I I have unofficial word that the DNR is opening the hatcheries to the public this year. Oh boy! I don't is know this breaking that, news? I, do we I need to? Well, do we have a breaking news? Do, 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 yeah, we need, need the one. sounder. I don't have one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. You got to do it with your your voice. Do, 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 do. Dan was on the ball, and then he just ruined. He was he was doing so well. <laughs> Dan's always on the ball. Dan's always on the ball. I got this. Uh, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> so I, I don't I can't speak to every hatchery in the state, but I contacted our local DNR officials uh, here in the area and the Walker Lake Fish Hatchery, which is just north of Ottertail Lake. Um, I've been told, don't you know? I mean, you can quote me, but I've been told that it is open operational this year, and the public is. Uh, allowed to to come and see it and if you've never been to a walleye hatchery you gotta go i, I highly recommend you go and you gotta go when they're doing the stripping because they've got these huge nets full of big big females and then yeah. full of lots of little males and 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 it, what it, it kind of makes my heart pitter patter a little bit i don't want to get too <laughs> emotional but it's it's it, you see all those fish and the other thing is it, it makes me realize just how poor of an angler I am because because <laughs> if all of those fish are in that lake and I'm not catching them there, I must be doing something wrong. Cause uh, it's, and then there's, there's all, and speaking of variety that, you know, the, the first step is they sort. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, they get the crappies out, they get the bluegills out, they get the bass out, they get the bullheads out, they get the carp, the suckers, the whatever. And so just to see the variety of species that are in that body of water is it's fun. I've been f fortunate having this TV show, Prairie Sportsman, and then uh, when I did Northland Outdoors before that too, we've we've filmed at a number of uh, hatcheries and also some some uh, netting and some stripping. So we did one on, I think we filmed one on Mille Lacs or something like that, and and they had these these big females, and I was like, can I just can I just hold one up? <laughs> Can I just hold one up for the camera? I've never held a walleye that big before. So did they let you? Oh yeah, they let me take oh, yeah, a picture sure. and and yeah. uh, you know and I said the picture is you know it's I, I made sure I said I didn't catch this fish. I'm holding right. this fish for the TV show, but it was uh, I think at the time one of the biggest walleyes that I that I'd held up for a camera. So it was uh, it was pretty neat to watch. And they did a lot of the the stripping and the mixing right there at at the the landing as part. There was media. It was a big media event, so they had yeah. all these people. They'd put on this show for everybody but it's uh, it's quite the process to watch oh look at that yeah dan yeah dan found it at a boy dan <laughs> that is uh yeah it's it, it's one of the and it, it's funny because when i started working for ottertail county one of the first things i did so this was uh, i don't know what you know 2017 is when i started working for ottertail county i went to the just like you said uh brett i went to the to the walleye hatchery and and did a video about it and and that was um that was one of our first successes on on uh, you know creating social media content for outer tail county mm. and um and yeah if if, if anybody has a, a hatchery near them like i'd say within it i'd say it's worth an hour drive for sure if you live wherever you are right now if you live within an hour of a walleye hatchery I obviously check with your local hatchery, your local DNR officials, different rules may apply in different places. But um, if you can go and see it when they're stripping, um, it's, it's a sight to be seen. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, um, Eric, well, people want to get up to Otter Tail Lakes Country uh, yet this at the end of winter, maybe start thinking about doing some some spring outdoor act, outdoor activities or recreation up there, even thinking about uh, booking a, uh, you know, a cabin here in the summertime. What should they do for more info? They can find their inner otter at ottertaillakescountry.com. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.